Bethel Family Worship Center in Durham, North Carolina is a wonderful, wonderful place. But it cannot contain the ministry gift deposited within its angel. His pulpit is the world. From CNN to being called by Upscale Magazine, one of the nation's leading men to watch in the 21st century. CNN, Charisma Magazine, the man with a plan. None of that comes close to describing the unusual gift which we are more than honored to not only welcome back to America's camp meeting, but to call our friend. I love him with all of my heart and you are about to be radically, undeniably, irreversibly changed. Your giant's about to fall and he ain't ever getting up again. Bishop George Blumer. Why don't you put your hands together for America's pastor? Come on, you can do better than that. Grab your neighbor by the hand and squeeze that hand gently and say to your neighbor, say, neighbor, if you have any intentions of hindering me, of receiving my blessing tonight, change your seat right now, because I come to praise him. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask that your word would go forth with power, that it would destroy the yokes of the enemy. We pray that the word that would go forth on tonight would be a word that you selected for your people's hearing. My obedience in delivering this word should bring us a corporate testimony that it was good for us to be here. The way that you're going to move, the lives that you're going to touch, the bodies you're going to heal, the prison doors you're going to open up, the debt that you're going to cancel, Ah, the debt that you're going to cancel. We give you praise in advance for it now. In Jesus' name, somebody give them a Shabbat out of your spirit. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I don't do a whole lot of talking outside of the word of the Lord. Pass that to me quickly. I don't do a whole lot of talking outside of the word of, of, of the Lord. I want you to put your hands together and um, help me to honor the first lady of first ladies. To the quorum of ministers and pastors and bishops, you the people of God, it's a blessing and a privilege to be here with you. My uh, little brother, big brother, first cousin all the way from Africa is here on tonight and I know he's gonna tear this place to pieces. I'm so happy I'm before him. Give uh, Tudor Bismarck a great big hand clap on tonight. It is impossible, it is impossible, Bahamas, it is impossible uh, to get the ministry of any person in a, a few minutes, a few hours, and so the Lord has blessed us to bring you some ministry products that I pray that's really, really going to bless you. Uh, if you've been watching Breakthrough, you've been seeing this warfare ecology uh, uh, ministry take off. I mean, you have blessed my ministry in ways that's just unbelievable. So we have that out there for you. I'm not who you heard I am. Uh, turn to your neighbor and say, uh, you don't know me like that. Uh, for all, for, for, for all, these are just some books that I brought that I know is going to bless you. For all of you who think that, um, that uh, you know, 
you know, I don't know how to say it. Uh, this is this 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 is for the crazy woman <laughs> that keeps on picking the same old joker over and over and over again because she does not understand what a man wants or what a man needs. Can I have that bottle of water right there? That, 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 just that, yeah. This, this, is, this, this is all, I'm sorry. This is, hold this for me, Bruce. This is, this is all, this is all that a man wants. Y'all looking at me funny. For most men, it takes four women, women, to make up their one dream. I done messed up the whole camp meeting, didn't I? Four women, most men, most men are looking for a cap, a container, content, and a label. And the problem with a lot of women is that you don't have no cap. So you're walking around spilling. This is why you got jokers trying to taste you and chase you. He don't like you, he just like how you taste. You need this book called No Suitable Mate. He don't like you, he just like how you taste. That's why you only get telephone calls at two o'clock in the morning. That's why you only get supersized at Burger King or McDonald's. You don't, okay, all right, all right. I stood in agreement with Mary Kay Baxter, the woman who wrote the book, The Divine Revelation of Hell, and wrote five books with her, uh, Divine Revelation of Prayer, Divine Revelation of Deliverance, a, a few of the Divine Revelation books. And so I'm, 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 I'm tired of talking about it. I don't like to do commercials. This one is Looking for Love, uh, 11 Stupid Things Women Do to Mess Up Their Life. <laughs> Would you like to know what one of them is? They marry stupid men, all right. <laughs> I ain't got no glasses. You're slipping, Bruce, you're slipping. Give Bruce a great big hand clap, that's my butler. If you would for a few moments, turn your Bibles to Ezekiel chapter number 28. Ezekiel chapter number 28, verse number, verse number 13. Ezekiel chapter number 28, verse number 13. I got to tell you a little story before I read this. My name is George Gary John Derrick Bloomer. I was born in Brooklyn, New York, 453 Columbia Street, apartment A, B, and C. Red Hook Projects. I was raised on government cheese and government butter, food stamps. I'm talking about food stamps before these new swipe cards came out. I'm talking about those orange 50 cent food stamps, the brown $1 food stamp. Look at y'all in here, act like you don't know what I'm talking about. I had a 300 to sometimes $500 a day cocaine habit that later on went into crack, and smoking crack. I would give my life to the Lord in Rackers Island prison. I was supposed to be there for 20 years. I wound up staying there for 18 months because that was my processing chamber. I came to preach to somebody tonight. That where you are is not where you are, it's just where you are to God can get you where you're supposed to be. And there are a number of you in here under the sound of my voice that tonight is your night for absolute total breakthrough at the camp meeting. Every demonic attack that you've been under, those demons have got to let you go tonight. 
lips, you gotta say it. 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 You, you, you gotta say it. And that's why tonight I'm just saying it. You know, I'm giving you my testimony. You know, a testimony is not thanking the Lord for your life, health, and strength, food on the table, or clothes on your back. I mean, that's a speech in a storefront church. We're waiting for more people to come. A testimony is an undeniable experience that you've had with God in the past to sustain you for any present or futuristical difficulties. A testimony is data and proof that the God that brought you out before will turn around and do it again. And, 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 and your testimony ain't for you, but it's for everyone that you come in contact with. Sort of kind of nudge your neighbor and say, I might be going through for you. I got to tell you the story. From grade one to grade nine, Pastor Parsley, my teacher passed me from class to class because she did not want me or they didn't want me in their class. So I learned how to read like 20 years ago, and I'm 52 years old now, which means that all of my adult life, I couldn't read, write, spell, but I could count. because I was running a private practice on the corner of Lorraine and Columbia. I was a pharmacist. I could count. And I learned how to read supernaturally and mysteriously. My mother was visiting one time with me I'm sitting there after eating. I had this little funny feeling in my head. My vision blurred, then it focused, and I read a can of split pea soup, Campbell's soup that was on the counter. And I said, Ma, I can read. She said, boy, you can't read. And I said, I can. And we went into the bathroom, and everything she pulled out of the cabinet, I was able to read that day. When I woke up in the morning, I couldn't read nothing other than the Bible. And so I went through a six year period of time not being able to read anything if it wasn't the Bible. So the Lord has showed me some things in the Bible that folks who's been reading all their life take for granted. And for a few minutes, we need to go there with each other. But this is the point that I wanna make and then we're gonna go to the text. After I came out of Rackers Island Prison, a preacher found me saw that I was gifted and pushed me into ministry. But it wasn't my time yet. And so as I went into ministry and I was doing the do with ministry, my addiction kicked back in. And so for two years, I was shooting up and preaching at the same time. Many times, 20 minutes before it was time for me to preach. And this spirit was so bad that if I wasn't high, I couldn't get a word. That's how cunning and crafty that demonic spirit is. And I remember preaching in New York City at, uh, 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 at a church, and they knocked on the door, and they say, you're on after the next number. In those days, they used to do, they used to call the songs numbers, number one, number two. And you're on after the next number. But I couldn't come out of the pastor's office, out of the bathroom in the pastor's study, because I couldn't get my shoelace back into my shoe, because my addiction had kicked in. It was there that I learned about the grace of God. And I'm not talking about this crazy grace that's being preached all over America. I don't want to start no trouble now. But this crazy grace that's being preached all over America where you don't have to repent or you, or you, you insult God if you do repent. I learned about the grace of God when I came out of that office, the Lord snatched that Haran high off of me and I preached the gospel that day and 90 people gave their life to the Lord. And when I was coming out of the pulpit, that high jumped back on me and I heard in my own voice God say these words, I'll use you any way you are, but I won't keep you. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. And so when I saw preachers preaching in America today, preaching in pulpits and you think they're dancing and they're shouting and you think that's the anointed of God, I can tell that it is a Haran withdrawal. 
Where are the prophets at now? Because not only do I have a relationship with Jesus, I had a relationship with crack. And you can't expose people to stuff that you haven't been exposed to yourself. So this is the word that the Lord has given me for this particular hour and this particular day. Ezekiel 28, verse number 13. And I told you the reading part of it, so if I mess up, you know, forgive me in Jesus' name. But I feel I need to read it. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God, and every precious stone was your covering. The sardis, the topaz, the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, the carbuncle, the gold, and the workmanship of thy tamarinds, I hope I said that right, and thy pipes were prepared in you the day that you were created. And thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I've set thee so. You upon the holy mountains of God. Thou walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. You were perfect in all your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in thee. I want you to note the word iniquity because iniquity is willful deviations from what we know to be the will of God. Iniquity is the sins of the saints. You know what you're doing but you're doing it anyway. By the multitudes of your merchandise that has filled the midst of you with violence and you have sinned. Arrogance produces sin. Ah. By the multitude of your merchandise, stuff have made you arrogant. And you're violent in your pursuit to keeping it. I will cast you as profane out of the mountains of God. I will destroy you, O covering church, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thy heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupt thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. Too smart and too cute. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquities of thy traffic. Therefore, I will bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. Hell is being born out of the nature of Lucifer. Therefore, I will bring a fire out of the midst of thee, and it shall devour thee, and I will bring you to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all of them that behold you. I want to preach tonight, and I've never been good at coming up with great preaching topics, so bear with me, because I'm going to try to give you one tonight. I want to preach this message tonight to you. Just look at your neighbor and say to your neighbor, time is on your side. Time is on your side. That's what I want you to say to your neighbor one more time. Time is on your side. In Genesis chapter number one, we hear a story. Genesis one says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of the Lord moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light and there was light. And we like to think that the world started in Genesis chapter number one, but John comes along and he says, yeah, Moses, I wanna say something here. You said in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. I say in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God and the word was God and the same was in the beginning with God. And there seems to be some sort of a conflict or clashing between the two writers. Enough for agnostics and, and, and atheists to jump in there and say that the word of God contradicts itself, but it really, really doesn't. You see, Moses was recording time. John was revealing unto us eternity. See, with God, God never had a beginning. He always was. It is extremely hard for us to understand that because everything that we know and everything that is around us had a beginning. The carpet that we walked on had a beginning. The pews that we're sitting from had a beginning. The microphone had a beginning. You had a beginning. I had a beginning. But with God, he never had a beginning. He always was. Can you say that with me? Always was. That word was means continuous past tense. He never had 
a beginning, he always was. And that's what makes you scratch your head when it says, in the beginning was. How can you have was at beginning? Only God can do that. Whenever God created himself, he decided that he was going to complicate life for himself, so he created the heavens. There was no earth. The, the heavens, the heavens alone, the heavens. And he decided that he was going to create angels, and the angels was going to worship him. And he made different types of angels, angels that bowed down, and angels that worshiped, and angels that sang, and angels that fought, angels that warred. What was God doing? What was going on something great and he decided that he was going to divide the heavens into thirds into thirds an innumerable host of angels that he had created to worship him because he's the type of God that needs to hear his name constantly constantly so he divided the heavens into third into one third he gave to Lucifer to one third he gave to Gabriel to one third he gave to Michael he gave one third to worship he gave one third to warring. He gave one third to messaging, to his messengers. And the heavens was filled. And God went and he sat up on the throne and Lucifer stood in front of him. Ezekiel 28, 13 gives us a little glimpse at how Lucifer looked in his glory days. First of all, the Lord said, you have been in Eden, the garden of God. Not the garden of Eden, but Eden, the garden of God. The world that then was before the world that Adam and Eve lived in. He was the one who walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. The inhabitants that lived in the earth before Adam and Eve showed up. The inhabitants that, that Adam and Eve was called to replenish, to put back, to replace. Lucifer's now trapped back up in glory, standing before God, and he's ministering to the Lord. And he has all of the stones and all of the colors and all of the gems of the souls of men. He's fellowship with them and he's standing on the throne and the scripture says that he had tamarinds and pipes. He had tamarinds and he had pipes, flutes. Someone said that he was the head of the choir. He wasn't the head of the choir. He was the choir. When Lucifer lifted up one hand, beat came out. He lifted up the other hand. He had Ooh, I like that. If I can get it there. Thanks, y'all stop it. I'm gonna make my own music next time. He was bad. And as he sat upon the throne, everything that was in glory moved to the symphonic rhythm of Lucifer's beat. And God was glorified till one day God looked down and saw Lucifer. You see, the thing that you need to understand is that up until this time, God really never really saw Lucifer's face or considered Lucifer's face because Lucifer cast a reflection of God. Remember, he was diamonds and carbuncles and emeralds. He was everything that cast a reflection. And so God never could see Lucifer for God seeing himself in Lucifer. And when God looks out of heaven, he doesn't want to see you. He wants to see his self in you. And, and when God doesn't see his self in you, it's because you have a problem with him. Long story short, Lucifer is corrupted from moving amongst those that are to give glory to God. I want to preach this because I know that there's several pastors in here. And your greatest warfare is not the devil. Your greatest warfare is the knuckleheads that you've hired that refuse to do the job that you told them to do. Always running their mouths, always talking, always trying to talk back. They refuse to do what you told them to do. And what I'm telling you to do is how God showed it to me. Wow, I messed up the whole meeting there. Was it the word knucklehead that bothered you? Every pastor knows that when you have a word on the inside of you, Satan causes someone close enough to you to rise up and say something to you. 
moments before you're to deliver it. And our worst conflict is that we have all these people around us that don't know how to shut up. So time is on your side. Time. 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 It's on your side. You may not understand it fully yet, but you will in a moment. Lucifer goes to God and he says, Lord, I want to talk to you for a moment. The Lord says, it's fine, you talk to me about anything. Lucifer comes and goes over to the Lord. He says, God, I want to ask you this question. What gives you the right to be God? You know, Lord, when I was walking up and down amongst the midst of the stones of fire and I was moving around, people, uh, uh, you know, I found some people that wanted to worship me too. And so I'm really, really trying to get a feel on how do you handle worship? You know. What gives you the right to be God? God says, okay, well, what gives me the right to be God? That's, I was here first and, and I, you know... You know. You know, so folks can ask you some questions about why you are where you are, and sometimes you can't answer it. Because I tell you about world harvest today, that you can talk all you want to and believe that you can just do this thing. But there's a secret to this thing that God haven't even told him. You think I'm joking? Run and try to duplicate it. What gives you the right to be God? He said, I was here first. Lucifer said, it ain't good enough. So God said, come on, step out here with me. Let me show you something. You see oxygen. You see snow. You see rain. You see people. You see mankind. You see all this galaxy. You see all these planets. God raised his hand. And by one swipe of God's hand, everything was gone. <laughs> He wiped out everything, complete, total blackness. Blackness. And he turned to Lucifer and he said, now put back what I just took. Lucifer said, I can't do it. God put it back. God put it back. And then he says, that's what gives me the right to be God. When you I want to preach in here. There are many of you that are under the sound of my voice that think that you're substandard because your education, your speech, y'all ain't here. You didn't go to school. You dropped out. You had a baby out of wedlock. Your first half of your life, you were gay. Whatever the situation is, if God has got a plan for your life, there's not much that you can do that the anointed cannot handle. somebody say it's the anointing it's the anointing it's the anointing I was invited to preach at one of those marathon conferences and the person the people who was putting together the marathon conferences the conference one of them didn't like me a group of them didn't like me because whatever you know who wouldn't like me and, and, and didn't like me and, 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 and so what they did they tried to intimidate me so what they did, they put up this awesome, articulate preacher in front of me because I had articulated at a time in my life that this guy is brilliant. And then they put a famous big shot preacher up behind me and placed me in the middle of articulate and huge greatness. And they whispered amongst themselves that Bloomer is going to crack. He's going to fail. There's a lot of people who will have that assignment in their life. They'll hear a message and they go to the next person and say, well, you better come with it tomorrow because what you did ain't got nothing to do with what I'm doing. <laughs> what happened to you ain't got nothing to do with what I'm doing. When I get through doing what I'm doing, it's going to be by the anointing of God. But let me tell you something. That first person, Tudor, went up there and he was articulate. The last guy went up there and he was famous and powerful, but I was anointed. And you better realize that God 
is trying to get something to you. It's the anointing that destroys the yokes and sets the captive free. What gives you the right to be God? I said, put it back. He said, I can't. God put it back. He said, that's what gives me the right to be God. But the devil is still not satisfied. And the enemy will never be satisfied when he's jealous of you. When a person is jealous of you, you can't change your hair color, your eye color. You can't lose weight or gain weight. You can't do nothing to satisfy them. The only thing you can do is die. Because the Bible says that jealousy is as cruel as the grave. And you got to get bad enough to say, I ain't dying for you. I know some of y'all don't hear me. Well, he don't, like, he, don't, he don't like short hair, so now you got long hair and can't even scratch your head. What you say? Can't even scratch it for fear that that sucker will come off. So here's where we all come in at. The Lord said to Lucifer, he said, see, see, you see the earth that you used to roam around in, walking up and down in the midst of the stones of fire? You see this? You see that, that earth that you were in? Look at it, Lucifer, because it is gone. And a catastrophic judgment hit the earth and wiped it out. Lucifer now is up in glory. The Bible says until iniquity was found in heaven and I want you to get this as clearly as the Lord showed it to me that when Lucifer was up in heaven with all of that iniquity God was faced with a dilemma and the dilemma that God was faced with that in eternity whatever goes on goes on forever and ever and ever God could have jumped down and snatched Lucifer put him in a chokehold and begin to beat his head up against the wall but he would have been doing that for how long forever and ever and ever so what God did, he sat on the throne while Lucifer was ministering to him, looking at Lucifer's ambitious face. Got up off the throne, went to his private chambers of eternity and opened up the zipper of eternity and pushed eternity on one side and eternity on the other and reached down and snatched the earth and caused it to spin off between two eternities. And then God went down into the earth and said, and God said, let there be light. And there was light. And he starts the chorus of creation in Genesis chapter number one, verse number three. And God says, number three, number six, God says, number nine, God says, number 11, God says, number 18, God says, number 20, God says, number 24, God says, number 26. And God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. And let him have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, the beast of the field, and over every creepy thing that creepeth upon the face of the earth. He set in order spiritual warfare at creation. The symbols of it is simply this. Anytime anything goes on in the Middle East, an attack is made on us. The commander-in-chief calls the joint chiefs and says unto them make sure the fishes are in the sea the fishes in the sea are the ships on top of the fishes are the birds in the belly of the ship are tanks and humdees in the tanks and humdees are men we control the sea we control the air, we control the field, and then the creepy things that creepeth upon the face of the earth brings to order what the enemy has been trying to take from us. God spoke this word because he knew that the enemy, the enemy was gonna work against us. Who has the right to be God? God began to create the earth. And when he created it, every day he said, the evening and the morning, the evening and the morning, the evening and the morning. 
He's the only creator that creates the day of, the day before. The evening and the morning is the first day. What was God doing? He was installing time. Time. Because he had a creature that was a creature of eternity. And he needed to clean and cleanse the heavens. So while Lucifer was up on the throne, he saw the earth that he had once roamed in and moved around in and rejoiced in had now come back to his full glory. And this time there was two members in the first church of Eden, Adam and Eve. And so when he saw that the heavens had opened up and the earth had now been recreated, he came down out of the heavens into the atmosphere of the earth. And when God saw the last angel who his tail had drawn come down into the earth, God got up from his throne and went over to eternity and pulled eternity to eternity and trapped Lucifer in time. Lucifer is a creature of time. Of time. And you are his wardens. Time is a prison for the devil. A few years ago, a demonic spirit was released in the earth. The United States of America were under a great attack. The church is in trouble and don't even know it. They change the way we sing. They change what we eat, how we dance, and how we worship. No one, no, no one wants to talk about heaven or hell, and they definitely don't want to talk about rapture. <laughs> Satan has become so bold and so in your face that HBO is now doing a program called The Leftovers. The Others. And it talks about the rapture taking place and everyone that has been snatched away, over 2% of the earth's population is gone. No one talks about it and they deal with how they just pretend as if God never even came. Our children from ages infancy to right at about the age of 28, 29 don't know any of the hymns of the church. They don't know any of the blood songs. We know how to dance and rejoice, but we don't know any of the blood songs. We don't know the songs that y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. We have this softer, kinder, uh, uh, cotton candy, make me feel good, warm and fuzzy type of worship that is, oh, I'm starting trouble, that is going on. You said it was camp meeting. Let's have a meeting. Let's have a meeting. I searched all over. Couldn't find nobody. I searched high and low. Still couldn't find nobody. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater than you. That's wonderful. That's a great, great song. I was driving in my car, and I got grandkids. And sometimes when they ride in my car, and I'm not in the car, they turn the radio on stations that ain't right. Must have been that Justin. And there I was, I get into the car, and the rap thing, the rap thing is going. I'm like, what in the world? But the DJ, Tudor, is crossing over. So another DJ is coming on, so he's signing off. And so he's, after he got finished playing this nasty song, that I can't even mention it here, he says, I want to end with this little song, and he put out the song. Searched all over, couldn't find nobody. Search high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody greater, nobody greater than you. Now that was a wonderful song. I'm not against the song at all, because I know who I'm singing the song to. But I thought to myself, if they can use that song to benedict an R&B hardcore rap station, then it couldn't have the type of conviction. No, it could not. And 
And I thought to myself, the songs that we're singing now don't have any reference to Jesus. I mean, I can sing that song to my girl. Searched all over. Couldn't find nobody. Searched high and low. Still couldn't find nobody. Nobody greater. Nobody greater than you, baby. He didn't sign off by getting one of those old hymns that says, there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's vein and sinners plunge beneath the flood, lose all their at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart. No, he didn't. The blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will never lose its power, for it reaches the highest mountain. It flows to the lowest valley. He didn't sign off with none of those kind of songs. Because those songs brings in the presence of God. The God that we know, we have not introduced him to our children. So I began to preach this, this gospel, but I got caught up in what this thing can do for you. CNN had me on. Larry King had interviewed me. On the front page of magazines. And a demon spirit got a hold of George Bloomer. The spirit of arrogance and pride. And my services and my appearances became gigs. I, I, I'm not preaching to you, I'm preaching to myself tonight. Became gigs. These young people who are coming up in ministry today, they think that all, all they need is a tailor-made suit, a Rolex watch, and a Mercedes Benz. They think that that's success. They know nothing, nothing about the turmoil of ministry. The struggle that goes along with it and very few people are willing to even teach it to them. <laughs> Hooked up with a group of friends that began to preach a gospel that is satanic and ungodly and that spirit got on me. And the devil's been after me for a long time. I mean, I was the general of spiritual warfare, pulling down strongholds, confronting demon forces. Can I preach like this in this church? Got hooked up with groups of people that says that drinking is okay. Smoking is okay. And fornicating is okay too. So it neutralized my message and I was getting richer by the moment. And very few preachers can see it because most of them are walking in it. There's a reason, Pastor Parsley, that I called you on the telephone and I said, how you doing? You said, how you doing, son? Miss you and love you. I said to you, I said, I am on my knees. And I want to say to you, I love you. I appreciate you. I apologize to you because God used you to bring me back to my senses. Y'all better get ready. inside a 10,000 square foot house with a nervous breath.
breakdown, Tudor. See, they want to hear something deep. Here it come, baby. Holding in my hand a bottle of Prozac that the doctor prescribed to me because I had a nervous breakdown. Rich, successful, with no God. And because you know more about church than you know about God, I can pull the wool over your eyes anytime I get ready with your fake prophesying self. It's the truth. It's the truth. I came up in hardcore holiness where the saints, the church mothers used to sit on the front row and quicken in the Holy Ghost. And if you did anything, they saw it in the spirit. And by the time you got to church, you were scared. I'm sitting up inside my house, wife gone, lost everything, alone by myself. with a nervous breakdown. Operating in a familiar spirit where demons are now giving me information. I'm sorry, y'all ain't with this tonight. Using intimidation, manipulation, and domination to control the church. I told you in my opening that I had a relationship with Jesus, but I also had a relationship with crack. I also had a relationship with whoredoms. So I can see the whores when they come to church. I can see, y'all don't like that kind of preaching. I, I, I can see the drug addicts when they come to church. I can see the manipulators. And see, a lot of you can't see it because you got discernment. I ain't got no discernment. I got discernment of spirits. I see spirits. A nervous breakdown. A tumor. Dying of cancer. 366 pounds after I weighed in for a gastro bypass surgery. Lost my mind and my memory was gone. But he hit me behind a veil. I'm sitting up in this huge house drinking iced tea, crushing my Prozacs that I'm supposed to be taking and snorting them. Okay. George Bloomer, the general of spiritual warfare, the mighty man of God who cast out demons, was pushed in a corner and those demonic forces came after me. I went to sleep one night and the Lord stepped into my dreams. I walked into my church in this dream and there was a man standing at the top of the steps. I said, how you doing young man? He said, I'm doing fine. I noticed he had a book bag on. I had a book bag on just like his, but my book bag was extremely heavy, so heavy I was resting on my heels. It was heavy to carry this book bag. His was identical to mine. And so I said to him, I said, your book bag looks just like mine. He said, yes. Uh, Pastor, would you like to see what's in it? And I said, yes. He pulled this off and zipped it open. I looked inside of his bag, and in his bag was my church, Bethel Family Worship Center. I looked up at him. I said, what are you doing carrying my ministry around? He looked at me. His eyes just went to lights. <laughs> and he says, let me see what's in your bag. I took my bag off. I zipped it open. It was cancer. It was whoredoms. It was disease. It was demons. And that man looked at me and he says, that's all of the stuff that God used you to set people free from. What are you doing carrying it around? I had gotten to a place where I was now carrying everything that I was assigned to deliver folks from. I'm sitting in the house snorting the Prozacs. 
getting up in the pulpit preaching, preaching. Nobody knows it. He don't know what time it is. This is crazy. Something is wrong. What in the world is happening to the church? We've lost our vision. We've lost it almost completely. I left my house, got into my 550 Mercedes Benz. I'm not bragging, I'm just showing you something that stuff don't mean nothing. I drove down out of my house, past my church, across the railroad tracks to the, into the red light district, pulled over to the side, rolled my windows down and said to the drug man, give me an eight ball. Flinged him $1,500. He took the $1,500 and signaled the young hopper to go and bring my drugs to me. While he was standing there, he's counting the money. He looks down in the car to say something to me and he said, Bishop Bloomer? I said, there no, ain't no Bishop Bloomer in this car, Bishop. He said, Bishop Bloomer? I said, no, no. He said, Bishop Bloomer? He stood up, did his hand like that, and flung my money back into the car. He said, what you doing down here trying to cop drugs from the drug man? Bishop Bloomer, are you crazy? I had forgotten that my picture's on the side of buses and billboards in the city. He said to me, he said, Bishop Bloomer, ain't this Tuesday night? Ain't this your Bible study night? The drug dealer knew when my Bible study was. He said, I ain't gonna sell no drugs to no preacher. You better get out of here, Bishop Bloomer. You're gonna mess around and make God take his hands off of my business. The drug dealer thought that God was blessing him. Now you know you hit rock bottom when you can't get the drug man. I went into my church. I went into my church, went upstairs, changed my clothes, came back downstairs, sat on a stool, moved the pulpit, and said to the congregation, I said, I just got set free tonight by being confronted by a drug dealer. And I told them my story. We put our tent up. Two weeks after the tent went up, I'm up there preaching, and the drug dealer comes up under the tent and gives his life to Jesus. He said, Bishop, the reason why I'm giving my life to Jesus is because I heard what you told your church and you told them exactly what's happening so I can follow a man like you that can admit that if you fall, God can lift you up. Nobody gets married so that your marriage ends up in divorce. Nobody has children so that your children are snatched from you and awarded to the state or put into foster care. Who buys a house so that your house ends up in foreclosure? Nobody buys a car so they can hide it from the repo man. But sometimes in life, stuff happens to you. And when it does, you need to know that you got a God who can turn that thing around for you. is on your side. I said time is on your side. Everything I went through was in God's timing to change things in my life. And I'm not afraid to tell you that the God that I serve let me go down rock bottom to bring me back up to where he wants me to be. And there are those of you in here, under the sound of my voice, you came to this camp meeting, it's wonderful, it's powerful, but somebody's got to get delivered. Somebody smoked crack last night. Somebody laid up last night. Somebody, glory be to God, is gonna get convicted tonight and say enough is enough. That every promise that God made to me, I'm about to get it. And the only way you're going to get it is to understand that you got to serve the man who controls time. I made a number, a number of mistakes in my life. But I found out that the devil can't use it against you if you tell it yourself. 
I learned how to tell on my own self and still dance. Lean on your neighbor and say, I got victory. When it's all said and done, I got victory. And I come to tell you that time is not running out on you. Time is just running out on the devil. And you need to realize that God has given you power to redeem and to get back everything that the devil stole from you. You need to realize tonight, those of you that are listening under the sound of my voice, that the devil is not smart enough to take what he took from you and destroy it. When the devil takes something from you, he puts it in a display case and assigns a demon to keep the dust off of it. He's crazy. That's why we're able to march into the enemy's camp and take back by force everything the devil stole from us. High five somebody and say, I want my stuff back. I want it back. I want it all back. Devil, you can't have it, it belongs to me and I want my, I want my stuff back. Is there anybody in here that understands what I'm saying? I come to tell you, I went down to rock bottom. They told me it was over. Bloomer, you're gonna crash and burn. You're done, you're gonna wind up dead in a hotel room someplace. But that was Satan's deal for me. But God had another plan. I feel a little preach in there. Look at your neighbor and say, God's got a bigger plan. He's trying to give me a testimony. He wants to bring me out. Is there anybody in the building that knows about the God that I'm talking about? I come to tell you he will bring you out. I've been down to nothing and he brought me back to where I'm supposed to be. No weapon that is formed against you by any means shall prosper. Women have never been my problem. It's that crack cocaine. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. It's them drugs. But the Lord has delivered me from the hand of the enemy. I want you to grab a neighbor and pull the neighbor. Say, neighbor, I need you to praise God because God is about to deliver you from the hand of the enemy. Drugs might not be your problem. Smoking might not be your problem. But whatever your problem is, time is on your side. The God I serve, he's going to turn it for you. I wish I can get a few people to turn. The way you turn is the way that God is going to turn it for you. He's going to fix it for you. Pastors is not over. Leaders is not over. The devil is a liar. He's defeated. But God is going to show up and give you victory. I wish I had a witness in the building. Grab a neighbor by the hand and pull that neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm pulling on you because it looks like your praise ain't working. So use mine. You need a praiser around you because the more you praise God, the more he turns things for you. I need the oh, I need thee. Every hour, I need thee. Oh, precious, oh, great God. Deliver me from the hands of the enemy. But I come to tell you in Columbus, Ohio tonight that I'm back now. I got my joy back. I got my peace back. I got my health back. I got my wealth back. Yeah! I got more money than Jehovah got witnesses. The Lord has been good to me. And it's all because I went through hell. Accusations and criticisms are the final stage before spiritual promotion. You can always tell how blessed you're going to be tomorrow by how much hell you're going through right now. If you're going through hell right now, it's because God is about to deliver you out of the hand of the devil. Every time you praise him, you get more time. Every time you lift him up, you get more time. You better learn how to Shabbat him. Shabbat comes from the Hebrew word Shabiri. It means to confuse the enemy. Somebody open up your mouth and confuse the enemy in this place. Let demons and devils know. You can't have my children. You can't have my husband. You can't have my wife. You can't have it. Say it! The assignment of this camp meeting is to restore holiness back to our churches. The assignment of this camp meeting is to get the dancers back dancing, to get the prayer warriors back praying. 
I wish I had a church in here tonight. Ah, high five somebody said, we're coming back. And God is turning back the hands of time. Yeah. We're going to see people filled with the Holy Ghost. We're going to see them praying in tongues. Yeah. It's not over for us. This fake gospel of grace will not prevail. It is the power of God that's going to make the difference. But if you praise him, angels will show up. If you praise him, angels will show up. If you praise him, angels will show up. When I open up my mouth and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, immediately two angels come. Pop, pop, stand on both sides of me. Bow their heads and open up their wings and begin to fight the principalities. If you praise God, your angels will descend in this house and destroy the yokes of the devil. Say yeah! Yes! Yeah! Praise him! Praise him! Praise him! Praise him! Praise him! And I'm not just up here talking. I came to the prayer meeting, to the camp meeting, just to give you my testimony. Not to be philosophical, not to be deep. Just to tell you that five years ago, you wouldn't want me to lay my hands on you. You must understand that praises does crazy things in the spirit realm. Judah means praise, but there's nine definitions to Judah. And one of the definitions to Judah means an open palm at the throat of your enemy. And the more you praise God, the palm becomes a fist. It means that praise is designed to choke the hell out of what's been choking the hell out of you. If you praise God, you'll choke the devil right now. How many want to choke that booger? I'm not just up here talking. I'll close with this. I just wanted to give you my testimony. I want pastors to know that your stuff is coming back. Your stuff is coming back. Everything the devil took from you is coming back. That 30% in membership that you see in them empty chairs in your church, that's over. The money's coming back. Television is, oh yes sir, it's coming back. This is the announcement. He handpicked you to be here. Your angels are being reassigned to you right now. I'm reminded of a story of an Englishman. An Englishman told this story that one night in London, England, in the summer months, they were enjoying a wonderful, wonderful evening. It's normally cloudy over there all the time, and so they were enjoying this wonderful evening, and he's taking in the night air, and he's not paying attention to where he's walking, so he falls into an open manhole. <laughs> he sprains his ankle and rips open his back. Help! He cries out of his calamity. And the story goes that a priest comes by and sees him in there and says, is anybody in there? He says, yes, I've fallen into this, to, 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 to this hole and, uh, and my ankle is sprung, I believe, and my back is bleeding. Uh, can you help me? The priest stands back and writes him a prayer and drops it in the hole. <laughs> help! He screams the second time. The story goes, a doctor comes by. Someone down there, yes, I sprained my ankle, my back is bleeding. A priest gave me a prayer that doesn't work. But I know you're gonna help me, sir. The doctor runs to his car, gets his black bag, comes back and writes him a prescription and drops it in the hole. He says, boy, I got a prayer that doesn't work and a prescription I can't get filled. Help! He screams the third time. The story goes that a friend comes by and recognizes his voice. Is that you down there? He said, yeah, it's me. But buddy, I know you're gonna help me. My, my ankle is sprung, my, my, my back is bleeding and a priest gave me a prayer that doesn't work and a doctor gave me a prescription I can't get filled. But I know you're going to help me. You're going to give me a ladder or a rope or something. And buddy backed up and jumped down in the hole with him. He said, you're stupid, crazy, special needs person. What's wrong with you? He said, I told you that my ankle was sprung and my back 
was bleeding and I had a prayer that wouldn't work and a, and a prescription I can't get filled. But he looked at him and said, you be quiet. I've been down here before and I know my way out of this. And I want you to know tonight that I've been down here before and I know my way out of this. And I come to tell you tonight that you coming out. Look at your neighbor say, oh neighbor, oh neighbor, you coming out. I wish I had a witness in the building. You're coming out. Your yokes are being destroyed right now. Those spirits are leaving you right now. Open up your mouth and give God a praise. In this place. Give him a praise. The last, the last camp meeting I preached at, was like nine months before my breakdown. This camp meeting, I come back to say, I'm back now. And no weapon formed against me can prosper. And because I knew how to praise him, you didn't hear no dirty stories on me. Praise will release a regiment of angels that will hide you in a secret place. to hide you in a secret place and for many of you under the sound of my voice while I was preaching I could hear that spirit those demons of re-addiction resurfacing bad people from your past coming just don't have the victory you're supposed to have and we tend to get into church and preach now in a way that deliverance no longer flows. And while I was preaching, I could smell crack and taste cocaine. I know it's in here tonight. I know there's those of you tonight that today is the beginning of the rest of your life. And your time has come for a miracle and for a breakthrough. I refuse to be religious another day in my life. I'm going to count to eight. That's the number of new beginnings. And at eight, Every one of you who's been struggling, come to the end of your rope. One prayer at this altar is going to reassign your angel and you're going to walk in victory. Amen. Woo! Lift those hands in the building. Your time has come. 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 One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Those of you that are watching by television, ain't no need to worry what the night is gonna bring. It'll be all over. It'll be all over Your time has come Your time has come Your time has come
Y'all praying? the Holy Ghost is going to do what the Holy Ghost is going to do right now. Watch it happen. Watch it happen. Softly. I'm hearing babies cry. I'm hearing babies cry. That's the, that's the sound of abortions and demons visiting you in your sleep and you can't get free from the torment of it. But tonight you're gonna to get free. Lord, I need you today with my arms stretched wide open. Lord, you're the only way Lord, I need you today. from the preacher <laughs> take it from the preacher Take it from the preacher tonight. That God will come and get you where you are. And restore your life back. And I don't want the ritual of altars to take place in this room right now. I want you to do what I did. And that's reach up to God. And then some of you at home watching right now. Tonight is your date with destiny. Today is the beginning of the rest of your life. Get on your knees right where you are. And tell the Lord, I can't wait till tomorrow. I need you today. Come into my life. Purge me, cleanse me, forgive me of my sins. What we are experiencing here you can experience right there, right now. Devil, 
devil, you are a liar. I command you to take your hands off of God's property. I bind you in the name of Jesus. Loose your hold. He was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. I decree it and declare it. And I speak it over your life right now. Now open up your mouth and give God a praise out of your spirit. Give a praise for your victory. Give a praise! Oh, come on and praise him! 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 I bind Haran. I bind nicotine. I bind the spirit of addiction. I bind perversion. I bind homosexuality. I bind it, I bind it, I bind it. Come on, open up your mouth and let's bind it in the name of Jesus. I dare you to pray in the spirit. I dare you, free now, shut up, free now, 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 shut up, now, 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 no more, no more, no more, no more, now, 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 no more, now, shut up, he cut up, open up your mouth and praise him, open up your mouth and praise him, you get it all back tonight, you get it all back, you get it all back, 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 the curse. The curse is broken now. You can Now, now, you get it back now. You get it back now. You get it back. You get it back. You get it back. You get it back. You will not die but live to declare the glory of God. I snatch you. I snatch you from the clutches of hell. I snatch you from the clutches of prison. Loose him now. No more. No more. No more. Somebody open up your mouth and praise him in the building. Open up your mouth and praise him in the building. Praise him! Nasakataba. Rokobo Sakataba. I feel the Holy Ghost in here. They get it back. They get it back. Done, 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 done. Shakataba. Done, 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 done. Now, 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 now. Woo! Pay attention. Just stretch your hands this way. Spirit of witchcraft broken off of you today in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus the spirit of witchcraft what they did to you was not your fault but you gonna walk in victory and in deliverance in the name of Jesus set her free oh! Open up your mouth and praise him. 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 The spirit of witchcraft broken over your life. Control broken over your life. Somebody should mock the Lord in this place. Listen to me. Come out of the spirit and hear what I got to tell you. What's your name? 
Jeremy. Jeremy, come out of the spirit. Hear what I'm going to say to you tonight. Because you're leaving here absolutely, totally free tonight. If I say anything to you that's wrong or off, you embarrass me good. That's how powerful this word is. I see you in the spirit. Seven years old, nine years old, 13 years old, fighting off those footprints that walks in the night. Today, you get back everything the devil stole from you. and loose him from the ghost of condemnation set free not your fault not your fault not your fault not oh somebody praise him in here tonight it's time to go home i feel the holy ghost in here somebody open up your mouth and praise him hallelujah 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 Your seeds here at World Harvest. I'm going to do a little play on the word. Your seeds here at World Harvest. God has sent you here for a germination process. So he can use you to harvest the world. I'm telling you. And it's jacked up folks like us with giftings and callings on the inside that people have robbed from us. What's your name? Hmm? Kanisha. Today is the beginning of the rest of your life. Kanisha, listen to me. I was in prison, in Rackers Island prison. I know a lot about spirits. And that monkey that's been riding your back is off tonight. You're in control of it now. And you're gonna have victory after tonight. Loose her, set her free. In the name of Jesus, somebody bless the Lord in this place. Open up your mouth and bless the Lord in this place. Open up your mouth and bless the Lord in this place. Uh, my time is up. My time is up. My time is up. But time is on your side. And the reason why your life is jacked up and continues to remain jacked up is because you're not supposed to be living your life for your children's mistakes. Tonight's the night, if you hear what I'm saying, you take your life back. because there's a healing taking place in your body right now. But you gotta let go 22 and 25 and embrace the maturity that God has placed in your spirit. You're gonna have victory. I'm gonna see you a year from now, you're gonna look like me. Miracle is taking place in your life right this moment. Touch her from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. All you have to do is receive it because God is going to do it. In Jesus' name, amen. I came to the camp meeting to give my testimony 
and to repent to you in public. And if God would do it for me, he'll do the same thing for you. I don't want anyone leaving. I need five minutes of your time. You can go back to your seats. I want every leader, every preacher, every man of God in this room to bow your heads and hear what I want to say to you. Thank you, Pastor Parsley. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Curses broken. What's your name? I promise you, Robin. I promise you, I'm trying to hold myself together. I promise you, this second time is gonna work. With your heads bowed. Nah, shakataba. With your heads bowed. I'm not talking to everyone, but I'm talking to a few pastors and leaders who the enemy has really, really messed with your church, your ministry, and your economy. That supernaturally, recovery is about to hit you. And you're not going to give to be seen, but you definitely need to be seen giving. I want to see the hands of those of you who the enemy has really, really attacked your money, your finances. Let me see your hands. It's really attacked it. Let me see the hands of those that were real givers and the enemy attacked your finances because he wanted to stop something. But do your hand like this, but he hadn't been able to stop it. I'm talking to you tonight. He blesses 30, 60, and 100 fold. I don't talk to you just like that. There are 30 leaders, 30 pastors, 30 businessmen in this room tonight. The seed that you're going to sow is in the life of world harvesters. I saw people delivered from homosexuality at the altar. I saw people delivered from the curse, the guilt, folks that just can't walk in freedom because religion has made them believe that God can't do it. I believe that was one of the reasons why I went through what I went through, because God could trust me to tell the truth about it. He just can trust me. I don't like anybody holding anything over my head. I, if I did it, I did it. If I didn't, I didn't. Thank you, Jesus. There are 30 businessmen, 30 men of God, 30 women of God, 30 businessmen in this room tonight. Every heavy burden that rests upon the shoulders of the man of God to pull off a meeting like this, which costs hundreds, tens of hundreds of thousands of dollars. Tonight, you're going to carry this anointing back to your homes. You're going to carry this anointing back to your church in obedience. Leaders, 30, 60, and 100. That's how God bless. There are 30 of you in here tonight. I want you to put your hands on your substance and you're sowing a seed of $1,000. An uncommon seed of $1,000. Even if you have to write your check standing up here, get up and start moving right this moment. 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 Get it, stand right here. Right this moment. Right this moment. Right this moment. 30 of you, right this moment. 30 of you, right this moment. My God, he's speaking. 30 of you, right this moment. 
No tricks, no gimmicks, no games, no playing with your head. Right this moment, you ain't moving quick enough. Get that seed. Get it, start walking. 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 Somebody clap those hands and bless the Lord. Get it. Get it and start walking. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. There will be a mighty release in this room. Clap those hands. They're coming. They're coming. They're coming. They're coming. I'm waiting on you. Get it. Even if you have to write your seat. Wow. Get it. Start walking. Get it. Start walking. Listen to me. Listen to me. I don't want to confuse you, but I'm going to obey God. There are five pastors in this room tonight. Five pastors in this room tonight. Your ministry is four years behind. The television, all the things that you're supposed to do. Your seed challenge tonight is $2,014. I want those five pastors to come and stand here with me. We're going to touch and agree. And what happened for me in ministry is about to happen to you in your ministry. It's going to turn. There are five of you in here. I hear it so clearly. You have no fear in buying or wearing a $2,000 suit. But you don't sew at that level. You need to start sewing at that level. There are five of you that God is going to turn things for. I'm waiting on you. Where are you? You might already even be up here and have to void the check. Turn it into that $2,014. Watch God do strange things for you. I'm waiting on 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 you. This is your season of turnaround. 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 I'm going to rebuke this spirit. Devil, you are a liar. We can't continue to struggle like this. In the name of Jesus. Where's those pastors? Where's those pastors? Where's those leaders? Where are you? In the name of Jesus. Five of you, come stand right here. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. There goes one. Clap those hands. There goes two. Clap those hands. There goes three, three, come stand right here. There are two others, there are two others. Shakataba, the struggle's over, man of God. The struggle is over, the struggle is over, the struggle is over, and it's been tough. The struggle is over, the struggle is over. Somebody clap those hands, the struggle is over. The struggle is over, the struggle is over. The struggle is over, you're one of them, you're one of them, you're one of them. You're one of them, you're one of them. One other, one more, clap those hands. I know God is speaking to me in this room right now. And Pastor Parsley, the same way I stood on that street corner and worked for the devil, that's how I stand on the altar and work for God. The devil is a liar. And every need in this house is going to be met. And debt cancellation is in your immediate future. But you got to release it. 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 Did you, did you hear me say, did you hear me say five years behind? You hear me say that? Do you hear me say five years behind? You heard, you heard me say that, right? Do you know what that means? You know what that means? The desire, the stuff that is in your heart to do, the stuff that you want to do. I'm going to say something to you. The folks who walked over you, who stepped, who stepped on you, the folks that you served and blessed and got jealous of you so they couldn't bless you back. The hurt and the pain that you have had to deal with. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Five years behind. They're going to look up boop, and there you are. And they're going to ask the question, how did you get on the throne? You'll be able to lift your hand and say, I seated my way there. And I don't owe nobody nothing because you didn't believe that I could get there. This is your year of doors opening up for you. 
in the name of Jesus. And God's going to send people. He's going to send people to serve you the way that you served. And the enemy doesn't like it. So you be very, very careful that the hurt and the pain that you have experienced doesn't manifest over the people that God is sending to you. Because man, I promise you, one year from now, debt cancellation is going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. All right? I want 300 of you in this room to bow your heads right now. 300 of you in this room right now. And this is your walk on the water seed. I want you to put your hands on your substance, your checkbooks, and I want you to write a seed to God for $300. And I want you to march down here like you are Gideon's army. I want you to march down here and look the devil in the face and say, I'm using this to turn things for me. I promise, I promise you, I'm never wrong when I give a word because I don't be trying to find one. I only deliver what God say. Your days of being looked over and passed over is now over. Turn to your neighbor and say, there's $300 on every roll in this church. Start working it out. Start working it out. Start working it out. Start working it out. Get that seed and start walking now in the name of Jesus. Get that seed and start walking now in the name of Jesus. If two of you have to do it, if three of you have to do it, we're going to make this happen in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Get that seed. Get that seed. Get that seed and start walking right now. Get that seed. Get that seed. Somebody bless the Lord in this place. Get that seed. Get that seed. Say to your neighbor, I got 150. You got 150, let's walk together. We're going to destroy this yoke. Three of you, I got 100 apiece. Come on, let's all walk together. In the name, there's, there's $300 on every row, in every row in this church. Get it, make it happen. Get that seed, get that seed. Get that seed of 300 and start walking. Somebody bless the Lord in this place. Bless him, bless him, bless him. This man right here is sowing a seed tonight of 10,000. <laughs> Pastor Parsley, I want to I, I want to say this. This this is what I want to say, and I'm not being funny or anything like that. These folks go to places and go to conferences and raise money and sow seed and give money to ministries without a cause. They stand up and they shout it out proudly. They don't win souls, they don't feed the hungry, they do nothing. And then you come to this meeting where the anointing is and where we're digging wells, purifying water, putting clothes on children's backs, and you sit there. Tonight, there should be a stampede of people running saying, I'm giving 10,000, I'm giving 5,000, I'm giving 2,000. And we're struggling to get 300 the devil is a liar he's a liar he's a liar so let's pray the spirit of nibbles away from here Tuda, I believe that you would really really like this in Greek mythology the poverty God's name is nibbles he's depicted as a rat with a rat's tail his two front feet are human hands his two hind are human feet and he has the face of a man he enters into a hole into the house through a crack hole and then he stands up as a physical man. His name is Nibbles because he eats out everything in the house, the home, the marriage, the children. And once he has got his belly filled with your prosperity, with your legacy, he goes back into the form of being a rat and then he leaves infectious droppings so that that house never prospers again and slithers through the hole and goes on to another place. It's a rat spirit. And I curse that spirit in this room tonight in the name of Jesus. And I command you to stand in faith. What's your name? Huh? Alice. How you doing, Alice? You, do, you say, great. Alice, I feel you pulling on my spirit. 
you're sowing tonight, Alice. Why? Yes. Why are you sowing tonight? For a breakthrough in your finances. It's done right now in the name of Jesus. Over and above in Jesus' name. I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on you. Here they come. I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on you. I'm sowing for my children. I'm sowing for prison bars to open up. I'm sowing for miracles. I'm sowing. I'm sowing. Get up. Start walking right now. Get up and start walking. Clap those hands. Clap those hands. Let's bless the Lord. Let's bless the Lord in this place. Yeah. 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 Get up. Come on. In the name of Jesus. 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 We curse that spirit and we release miracles financial miracles in this place time is on outside I got so caught up in the message I didn't get to the clocks but time is on your side I want everyone else in this room to put your hands on a $30 seed 